Hi, nobodies. Um, so things are better now. I'm feeling better. I have been working on a list of things. So, um, let me, I decided to take a mental health day. I mean, like, not that I do a whole bunch of stuff anyway, but, um, today was a day that I, like, needed to work on some, uh, skills, you know, like, like really, cause I need to figure out what's wrong with me. So I was looking up a thing that I found interesting. So I, I decided to jot it down so I could share with all of you who don't watch me. All right. So we got the seven kinds of emotional pain that this person came up with. Number one is like cuts and scrapes. These are caused by rejection, you know, like, oh, they didn't return my phone call or they didn't answer my text or they don't want to be my friend. Um, you may become angry at the person, yourself or the world in general. And they suggest, um, number one, don't excel, <laughs> don't accept self-criticism. So quit it. Number two, rebuild your self-worth by focusing on strengths. This means you need to write down your strengths. Number three, I don't quite agree with, but I'm going to say it anyway. Find other people to fill the void. Okay. Um, number four, desensitize yourself by practicing being rejected. This is like when you know somebody's going to say no. <laughs> Um, and when I read that, I was like, oh my God, that reminds me of that dude. There was this dude that I used to hang with and he, he would walk up to like every girl and say, well, fuck. And most of the time he would get slapped. And, and so I'm like, he was like, this guy isn't scared to ask anybody. Hey, you want to? And the thing is, is that sometimes he got an answer that he wanted, you know? So it was like, hey, I mean, he's like, and I remember him saying, you know, at the end of the night, he said, I might've gotten slapped 50 times, but it was worth getting it. He said, it, but it was worth it to get fucked once or to get to fuck somebody once, you know, and them not expect anything else from him. Okay, so number two is the relationship muscle weakness of loneliness. That's when you're so used to not being around people that you just, you don't like know how to interact. You don't know how to show love and, and stuff. So they're like exercise, empathy, and like adopt a pet. And practice giving and getting emotional rewards. Because see, like like me, I don't have a pet. I really want a hamster, though. I'm thinking I might get a hamster. I don't know. I'm, I'd be afraid it'd bite me. I've still got that from when I was like three. Which I'm going to get to that. Um, but, you know, so I'm always just kind of scared of little rodents that they're going to bite me. Um, Nutella used to put her teeth on my finger and it was kind of like you know she didn't bite me but she would put her teeth on my finger um so i don't know that i want one of those because I'm, I'm just not like i like to watch them and i like to pet them but i'm so afraid that they're gonna bite me <laughs> and oddly enough like i'm not afraid like like a cat will do so much more damage <laughs> and i'm not afraid of cats course I can read a cat better you know you kind of know when they don't want you to fuck with them all right number three broken bones of loss and trauma that's like the real pain uh, find a way to ease the pain that is consistent with your ordinary coping style and if you need to give yourself more time to heal obviously you know nobody can tell you how long to 
mourn somebody or to be upset about something that's happened to you. Yeah, I mean, it's just, there's nothing anybody can do about that. Um, number four, the poisonous effect of guilt. You're essentially the source of your own happiness. Um, which isn't quite true. I mean, it's true, but it's not true. So you got like three different kinds of guilt. You got unresolved guilt, which is you feel like you've done something. Survivor guilt, which is in and of itself. And separation guilt. So you're supposed to apologize for your unresolved guilt. So you basically just say, I'm sorry to everybody, which I fucking do that. Of course, I never know what I'm saying I'm sorry for. <laughs> Not always. You know, sometimes it's just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, like, because I just feel guilty all the time. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Um, uh, forgive yourself for the survivor's guilt and separation guilt. Um, after forgiving yourself, re-engage with your life. Uh, number five, emotional scabs of rumination. I think everybody has these. Um, this is where you go over and over past experiences. And this can take a toll on your well-being. Uh, you have to learn to stop. The first step is to realize that other people don't see the world as you do. Um... I remember the first time I heard the phrase, uh, there's three sides to every story. There's your side, my side, and then there's the truth. Everybody sees things differently. Um, also, like, if you watch the, there's that movie where, what was it, perspective, focal point? I can't quite remember. I, I know I watched the whole thing, but it was like a guy had gotten shot in front of a crowd of people, and they each saw something different. And, you know, like when you, when you were with somebody and they did something and then years later you hear them telling a story and you're like, that's not what happened, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, they don't see the world as you do. And you also have to, you know, like uh, they suggest like distracting yourself from it. Like if you've dealt with it, you need to distract yourself from it because that is a harmful thing basically a harmful thing so you need to be like the mom who makes sure that the toddler doesn't play with the harmful things so be your own mom and make harmless play things look like fun instead of the dangerous play things look at fun if it's anger at someone else put a positive spin on it like say you know my mom was a cruel bitch but I try not to be, you know, like she made me more uh, cognizant of what I say and how to say it, uh, you know, instead of saying, you know, she just, she just ruined me. No, she didn't ruin me. I mean, she kind of did, but anyway, number six, the psychological pneumonia of Seek support to gain perspective. It's basically, you know, just like talk to somebody, you know. Hopefully you've got people in your life. If you don't, you can always like call the suicide hotline. They're kind of, I mean, of course, I don't know. I mean, would they frown upon, is that frowned upon? Like if you're just having an existential crisis or you've just failed, but you're not really like wanting to kill yourself. Like would they get pissed? Would they feel like, Hey, you know, this is for people who are going to commit suicide. It's like, well, hey, you know, it might get to that. I'm just trying to get way ahead of it. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there are people that call, like, suicide hotline just to talk to somebody because they're so lonely. Um, replace anxiety, fear, and sadness with humor. I have to learn this skill. I want to learn that skill because, like, I want to be funny. I mean, I think I'm funny. 
Um, but when you're your own audience, you don't really have to worry about whether it's actually funny. As long as it's funny to you and you get a good laugh, it's that's all that really matters. Okay, number seven. Number seven's the big one. Probably, I, I would say probably the biggest cause of most people's emotional pain. And that is low self-esteem. When your self-esteem dips, you question yourself and your worth. Everything. Everything is wrong. And at this point, when you're questioning your decisions, your intelligence, uh, when you've got the whole, should I stay or should I go, going on, um, you're more vulnerable to other people's critical com comments. Um, and you feel responsible for all the bad things in your life, like everything. You know, if somebody runs over your foot when you're in this tailspin, you're going to say, well, it's my fault. My foot was there. If I wouldn't, you know, if I would have walked faster or if I wouldn't have been in such a hurry, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter how fast or slow you walk. It's going to be your fault. Uh, when your self-esteem dips, everything is your fault. Um, and I, I honestly can't say that mine's ever been that high. <laughs> Um, uh, you ruminate over your weaknesses, you know, like, like every bad thing. You know I mean, when, when self-esteem takes a dip and it doesn't take much for like mine to take a dip, it doesn't, I mean, any, any slight rejection will have me questioning, like, of course, I can't have this lovely thing, you know. We can't have nice things. I can't have nice things. So, um, and you'll, and this dip in self-esteem will also cause you to lack what you need to succeed at important life tasks. So, they say, um, have compassion for yourself and take a mental catalog of your strengths. Um, I look at having compassion for yourself as saying, you know what, I'm not that bad, you know, <laughs> like, like, I'm not a horrible person, you know, I mean, and, and I mean, like when I say have compassion for yourself, and I'm sure that they kind of mean it when they say have compassion for yourself, I think that they're, they're saying, like, if somebody you love is sitting in front of you and they're like, I'm such a failure, I'm such a a spaz or a shit or a dumbass you're gonna say no come on it's not that bad you've got lots of great qualities you know you're gonna build them up I mean most people don't let somebody sit in front of them and put themselves down most people are gonna say bullshit come on you know and they'll start trying to build them up that's how most people are at least of course, I shouldn't get into not everybody's mind works. Not everybody sees the world as I do. But I'm thinking that most of the time when you see somebody down on themselves, you're going to try to build them up. You're going to say, you're wrong. So we have to remember to do that for ourselves too because sometimes there isn't going to be somebody there to hear you say, I suck. I'm horrible. I'm stupid. You know, so you have to have a little bit of that for yourself to say, these are just these negative automatic thoughts and I don't know that they're the truth. I need to verify, you know, and, and of course, most of the time people are not going to. So, I mean, like if you, if you've got a weakness that you need verified, I guess you need to speak to somebody who hates you because somebody who likes you is not typically going to say, well, yeah, you are ugly. <laughs> you know, I mean, like they might say, oh God, you're hideous. My dog wouldn't hump you. You know, I mean, they might say shit like that, but 
they don't mean it. Nobody's really going to like mean it and say, oh my God, you are so fucking ugly. I can't even stand to look at you and like mean it. Nobody's going to say that to you. And unless they're a troll. I mean, I've even the bluntest people I know, they will avoid that like the fucking plague. <laughs> um, practice mindfulness to combat this type of pain. Um, you know, just kind of like don't dwell on all the ways you suck. <laughs> uh, exercise willpower so that you can feel good about yourself and say, well... You know, I didn't do all this bad stuff that I want to do because, like, I'm all self-destructive now. Because when your self-esteem takes a dip, we tend to become self-destructive. And accept the fact that shit happens. Not every failure is your fault. And even if you do fail on your own merits, it's not the end of the world. Things don't always work out. You can do everything right and things will get wrong. It just happens. So you just accept the fact that shit happens. So that's all I've got for right now. I wrote out my own strengths and weaknesses. I actually did it. I wrote out my strengths and weaknesses. And I sent texts to the people who know me better than anybody. And asked them to tell me about me you know and I was like I need at least three strengths and three weaknesses and what I'm going to do is you know and I told them I was like please be honest about this because if it's if it's a weakness that y'all are noticing I need to know about it you know, because how can I work on something if I don't realize that that is such a... Because the thing is, is, like, if you've got, like, I've got my list. And say, um, okay, this one's detached. If that's on everybody's list, then that's definitely one of my weaknesses. And I need to work on that. I need to research that. You know, the strengths part is more of a... You can look at it the next time you're feeling down and say, okay, well, these people who know me said these are my strengths. Uh, we did this, me and my ex did this with our daughter in therapy. And the thing is, is like all three of us had to write down her strengths. And me and my ex pretty much wrote down the same shit it was a trip I mean we worded it differently but it was pretty much the same shit so when you've got like three people who know you very well saying that you're smart you're uh kind and what's another one oh uh patient then you can say on those bad days, I'm kind, I'm smart, and I'm patient. You know, you can say that those three things are true about you because you're not, you know, I mean, now granted, I mean, a lot of people are going to say smart. They're going to say smart on that because nobody's going to say you're dumb. <laughs> you know, they won't. Um, they'll word it differently. So I'm going to go now. And like I said, my day is picking up. Um, I can't say that this is over. I really can't because I know why I'm feeling better. And it's not the work I've done. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not the work I've done. But the work I'm doing should help me if comes back I mean I've got I've got to do the work I said that you know like going to therapy I've been doing that for the longest time I I really need to do the work um so I'm gonna go now for all of you who don't watch who do watch this I hope that you found it helpful I hope it helps you understand a little bit more about, like, 
the various types of pain that a person can feel inside, you know, that it's something different, you know, and, and maybe that helps you deal with somebody who is hurting that you say, you know, well, okay, well, now I know that if they've been rejected, you know, we need to go out and distract from that, you know, or, or we need to have like this, this pep party where we're like fuck them they don't fucking know you you're awesome you rock you rule you know like you don't know how to help them out you know and with like the trauma one and and loss you know you just give them time don't ever tell somebody oh come on that happened years ago get over it don't i've got like a blister on my lip that's what i keep doing i feel it I'm going to go now. I'll see you later. Bye.